I'd like to discuss Adaptive for Office 365 from an admin perspective. To start, let's take a look at a piece of reference architecture. In this particular use case, we are looking to federate Active Directory out to Office 365 so our user is able to log into the environment no matter where they're located using their AD credentials. In order to accomplish this, we need to deploy the Adaptive Cloud Connector. This is a small 70 meg Windows services file. While it's preferable to be deployed on its own dedicated server and multiple servers at that for HA, it can certainly be installed on a shared server. The important thing is that this Windows server must be on the same network as AD so there's a direct line of communication. From there, the cloud connector is going to act as a proxy server. It will then communicate over port 443 out to the adaptive cloud. And at that point, we will have the ability to do full federation. Okay, let's hop into the product so we can show you how Office 365 federation works. Here we're starting in our user portal. We go in the upper right hand corner and we click to switch to admin portal. We are now logged into the admin portal. We'll see some interesting graphs, charts, and whatnot. We're gonna come down to web apps, click on that. Let me make this a little bigger so it's easier to read. And we're gonna drill down to the Office 365 app. You'll see right here, I've got Office 365, and it shows that it's using WS Fed for the Federation method, and it is a full provisioning app. We're gonna click on that. When we get in here, you will see the different settings on the left-hand side that you can use for configuration. And one other thing I want to note is the hot links that are, are throughout this. So if you were to click on that, you'll see it pulls us into the full configuration guide. Very useful when you're trying to learn what's going on. And then you'll also see some different information tabs throughout to, to help walk you through. Um, under the application settings, in order to do the federation, we need to log in as admin using the onmicrosoft.com account. Uh, once we've logged in, now we're communicating with Office 365. If we come down below here, we'll see a little bit of useful information, and this is really for controlling applications accessing from mobile devices. And here you'll see our application ID for the apps on the phones, and then the certificate that's used. Next, we come into description. This is how you configure the tiles that show up in the user portal. You can see we can name the app Office 365, put some information, and down below here, you can see we can configure what the logo actually looks like should we wanna change that picture. Under permissions, this is where you're gonna to start to see how the roles are mapping over to the product. Now here we've got some different roles we're mapping and let's say if you're you know an employee that's going to pull the employee role from active directory and based on that you have the ability to view the app you can run the app and it automatically deploys for you next we come into policy policy gives you an easy way to to script policies you may want to use here's a few examples in here so for example, if I wanted to block access to Office 365 based on time, I could load that up. I could you know, make some of the, the necessary changes and maybe for some sort of a call center, I wanted that user to only be able to access between the hours of eight and five. If that's the case, so be it, I can do that. Not gonna save those changes which is gonna kick me out, and I'm gonna have to come back into the app here real quick. Now we're gonna get into the advanced tab here, and this is really where the, the SAML token is created that's gonna get passed over to Office 365, and this has all the different attributes that are, are used during communication. Um, sometimes somebody might wanna change that. You know, In this example here, you'll see that the token expires after 200 minutes. Maybe for some reason you want to expire after an hour or you, you want to let it go longer, whatever the case may be. You can see that's how that gets programmed out. Provisioning. This is where 
the different license management happens. Whenever we click on this, you'll, you'll see a little warning. And this is just letting you know that if you are using Microsoft DirSync for synchronization, you need to have that disabled or else you run into problems where the adaptive connector and, and cloud is trying to connect to, to Office 365. Um, in this, you'll see we can get a summary of licenses. If I take a look here, you'll see that we have 540 licenses, 545, but we're only using 123 at this point in time. And then you'll see some information about doing hybrid exchange. Uh, what that really is, is when you have an on-prem exchange server and you're using exchange in, in the cloud, there's some communication that needs to happen in particular with syncing as to how you want to allow or, or not allow overwriting. Uh, also, as part of the provisioning process is a very important process of deprovisioning. And in here you can add various rules. In this one, you'll see that if the user is disabled in Active Directory, we remove their user license. If that group is deleted in Active Directory, we're then going to delete that Office 365 account. Um, with this, there's a lot of different policies that you can put in there. And then finally, we have some role mapping as to how licenses work. In this particular instance, we're showing it that if a user has multiple roles, they will get assigned a license per role. And then down below here, this just shows uh, based on role and, and what license they may get. And if you expand this out, this will actually show you all of the different attributes used for provisioning and some of the ABAC that we're doing. And, and this is something that is fully customizable should somebody want to do it. Uh, the last tab I'd like to show you briefly here is workflow. We don't have anything enabled at, at this point in time, but we could set up a situation that if somebody wanted to add Office 365 to their user portal, we could put a request in place where one of the admins has to approve that request. And in short, this is how Office 365 looks like from the admin perspective.